Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on simplifying trigonometric expressions using only sine and cosine. So the big idea behind this is that maybe we have a fairly complex looking trigonometric expression and we want to turn it into something that involves only sine and cosine so that we can better combine things and actually simplify it. In order for this process to work, you really do have to know a few identities uh, in your back pocket so that you can begin the simplifying process. But really, you don't have to remember all of the identities, really only focus on the ones that involve sine and cosine, because those are the ones you'll end up using the most. So for example, here I have just a couple of my negative angle identities, only the ones for sine and cosine. Here I have a Pythagorean identity with only sine and cosine. I have my reciprocal identities and my quotient identities. Um, and I'm only going to use these ones so that I can change secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent into sine and cosine. So that's essentially why I have all of these on here, so that I can change things so that they involve sine and cosine. And if I do have sine and cosine, maybe there are some ways that I can go ahead and combine them. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into those examples and see exactly how this process of just writing sine and cosine really does help you see the connections and simplify things a lot easier. For the first of these, we'll look at cosecant of theta multiplied by sine of theta. And that looks like a fairly simple uh, expression as it is, but we can use our reciprocal identity on the cosecant of theta right over there. So cosecant of theta is equal to one divided by sine of theta. We're not going to do anything with the other sign because it's already a sign as it is. And you can see that when I write it like that, um, you get this extra sign in the bottom that will cancel with the one in the top. So simply by writing cosecant as one over sine, we get some uh, connections that we can go ahead and move forward with the simplifying process. So in this case, the signs cancel and we'll only be left with one. All right, let's try another one. Uh, let's make this one a little bit more difficult. Let's do negative sine squared of theta multiplied by the quantity cosecant squared theta minus one. So let's go ahead and rewrite that cosecant of theta much like we did last time. This one's squared, so we also wanna make sure that our uh, value is squared as well. So one divided by sine squared of theta. Okay, not bad. So we're multiplying by the sine squared of theta. Let's go ahead and put that inside parentheses. It will have to, have to distribute to both parts. So this will give us negative sine squared of theta all over sine squared of theta. And then we'll distribute to the second part. Negative times a negative will be a positive sine squared of theta. Okay, so that's looking really good in there. Uh, here we can cancel out some values, so sine squared over sine squared, those are gone. So now I have negative one plus sine squared of theta. And just looking at it, it feels an awful lot like a Pythagorean identity. Uh, it's not quite though, it looks like uh, um, we have things just mixed up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take out a negative one. So I'll give us a one minus sine squared of theta, and there's that Pythagorean identity I'm familiar with. Here we have simply cosine of theta. So negative one multiplied by cosine of theta, we can just write that as negative cosine squared of theta. So by writing cosecant in terms of sine, it gets our foot in the door, we can see what will cancel and actually move forward with the simplifying process. Uh, let's go ahead and look at an even more difficult one and continue this process. So in this one, I have one minus cosine squared of negative theta, all divided by one plus tangent squared of negative theta. So this is one of those good situations where maybe you've forgotten your uh, negative I angle identities for tangent. But no problem, if we write everything in terms of sine and cosine, those are the only two we'll really need to think of their negative angle identities. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with this one. And I'm actually gonna rewrite it so that I can clearly see where those uh, squared terms are being applied. Uh, because often times when we have a trigonometric function that has those little twos, those little squares on the function, it means that the entire function is being squared. And sometimes it's really confusing. You think only the, the angle is being squared, or only the tangent is being squared, but really the whole thing is being squared. So let's go ahead and write it like this. All right, so now what do we do? Well, on the top part there, I have one of my negative angle identities. 
And that tells me that I can simply write cosine as, or cosine of negative angles simply as just cosine. So that negative goes away. On to the bottom. I can write tangent as sine over cosine. So we'll write sine of the negative angle all over cosine of the negative angle. And now I can use my uh, negative angle identities on these. So sine of negative angle will just be negative sine. Cosine of negative angle is just cosine. So one minus, let's see, I have cosine squared of theta all over one plus negative sine of theta all over cosine of theta. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's see, continuing on, I can apply the squared to the top and to the bottom. When I do that, um, such as applying to my negative sine of theta, I'll have negative sine multiplied by negative sine, that'll be a positive sine. So one plus sine squared of theta. This two uh, will also apply to the bottom, so this will be cosine squared of theta. Okay, so everything is written in terms of sine and cosine. We're moving forward, but it's starting to look a little bit more complicated. Now I have fractions uh, inside of my fraction. Uh, to better simplify these fractions, let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by our common denominator of cosine squared theta. All right, let's see what that gives us. So up on the top, uh, we have one minus cosine squared of theta multiplied by cosine squared of theta. For the bottom, this is going to distribute into both pieces here. So the cosine squared has to go to the one and it has to go to that sine squared over cosine squared. So it's gonna go to the first guy, just be cosine squared. It's gonna to go to this one and the cosine squareds will cancel each other out leaving only sine squared. All right, now I think it's a good time to start working in some of those Pythagorean identities. And the first one I see is this one minus cosine squared. That's simply equal to sine squared. That makes the top look better. And the other Pythagorean identity I see is right there on the bottom, cosine squared plus sine squared, that's equal to one. So when the dust clears and this is uh, all settled down, I simply have sine squared of theta multiplied by cosine squared of theta. And that's nice and simplified. All right, one last example before we go so that you get a really good idea of how this process works. Let's go ahead and simplify this one. This one we have secant of theta plus cosecant of theta all multiplied by cosine of theta minus sine of theta. So we'll start off with those reciprocal identities, writing everything in terms of just sine and cosine. So secant turns into one over cosine, cosecant turns into one over sine, and now we're moving forward. All right, from here, I still need to multiply. So let's go ahead and foil this out. We'll have our first terms multiply. So cosine of theta all over cosine of theta. My outside terms will need to multiply. Uh, inside terms. And then my last term. So positive times a negative is a negative. Sine of theta over sine of theta. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Uh, we can simplify a few things here. So that'll be a one. That'll also be a one. positive one minus one, the ones will actually cancel out. So I'll simply be left with negative sine of theta all over cosine of theta plus cosine of theta all over sine of theta. All right, now I think there's a, a good chance of just writing these in terms of their functions. So what I have here is negative tangent of theta plus cotangent of theta. And that's nice and simple as it is, all right. So hopefully you get the idea that if you can change things into sine and cosine, you can better see what might cancel out and what will better combine. Of course, knowing your identities for sine and cosine is a must for this process. Uh, definitely comb over your identities and start memorizing any of them that involves sine and cosine. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.